Disney is evil. Morality? These people don't even understand the basic concepts of right and wrong, good and evil. They're not even capable of understanding simple human decency. What do you do when you encounter evil? The comedic genius Mel Brooks said, the best way to defeat evil? Mock the hell out of it. Welcome to the architectural outcast mocking of the evil. That is Disney's The Acolyte. Architectural Outcast. The Acolyte, Episode 5. The plot? There is no plot. It's just incoherent ramblings that should have been condensed down into one episode. Episode 5 takes place in the forest. Osha wakes up. Fight, fight, fight. Lightsabers everywhere. Look at the pretty colors. Jedi die. Master Soul orders Yord to take Osha back to the ship. Jackie captures May. Master Soul faces off against Milo Ren. Fight, fight, fight. Lightsabers everywhere. Look at the pretty colors. It's revealed Smilo Ren is Apothecary Dude. Wah! Apothecary Dude speechifies. He's here to kill his disloyal acolyte. And while he's at it, he's going to kill everybody else as well. Oh, by the way, I'm a Sith. But it's all the Jedi's fault because of what they did 16 years before. In the confusion, May runs away. She force speaks to Osha, begging for her help. Osha convinced Yord to disobey orders to go back to the fight. The apothecary dude catches up with May, but he's prevented from killing her by Jackie, who proceeds to kick his ass. But at the last minute, apothecary dude kills Jackie. Yord's reward for disobeying orders? He gets his neck snapped. Master Soul goes on a tear kicks the ever-loving Stefan out of Apothecary Dude. Just when Master Soul's about to finish off the Sith, Osha screams, No! Jedi don't do that! They don't kill! Master Soul says, You're right! Throws his weapon away. Apothecary Dude rearms, goes back on the attack. Just when it looks like he's going to finish everybody off, Osha leaps in, slaps the merchandising opportunity on his back. Bright light draws in those scary insects from episode four. Apothecary dudes swarmed, carried off. Master Soul and Osha abandon the Jedi dead, rush towards the ship. To quote the outlaw Josie Wales, buzzers knee deep too. Somehow, Osha gets separated from Master Soul. But in this big, massive forest, she just so happens to run into May. They have a fight. Osha's knocked out. May cuts her hair, changes into Osha's clothes, joins Master Soul on his ship. Apothecary Dude is still alive. He now has Osha. Twins changing places. Wow, what an original idea. I guess Disney's ripping off the parent trap now. At this point, before we go any further, I need to acknowledge something. I predicted that Smilo Wren was going to be White Devil Mother. This episode, we learn Smilo Wren is Apothecary Dude. Looks like I was wrong. I want to point out a couple things, though. As they're headed back to the ship, Yord tells Osha the Sith can get in our minds. Osha says, wait a minute. That's a power my mother had. In the scene where Smilo Wren is revealed to be Apothecary Dude, Apothecary Dude says to Master Soul, remember me? And Master Soul says, I sense I know you, but I can't place you. An apothecary dude says, you don't remember what happened 16 years ago? This begs the question, why would a man care about what happened to an all-female lesbian witch coven commune 16 years before that didn't have any men? Is he one of the witches in disguise? One of their lackeys? Or are the writers so incompetent these are just plot holes? Well, we got three more episodes to find out. Let's talk about that fight at the beginning of the episode. <laughs> the writers have no clue. In my youth, I was on the wrong side of an outnumbered attack. Now, there are tactics to be used in those circumstances. I recommend running like hell because the reality is if the side with numbers knows what they're doing, coordinates their attack, you're screwed. The Jedi are supposed to be the baddest beings in the galaxy, enforcers of Republic law. 
but somehow they never thought to develop the tactic of overwhelming their opponents by coordinating their attacks. Instead, they line up to be massacred one by one. In George Lucas's Star Wars, A Lightsaber in the Hands of a Skilled Jedi, there wasn't much in the galaxy it couldn't handle. It was such a dangerous and feared weapon that during the Empire, just being caught in possession of one would get you executed. In Disney Star Wars, the lightsaber's a joke. Not only can you take one through the gut, through the spine, and walk it off, you'll be fine. Now, it can't even cut through a helmet. In fact, you smack a helmet with your lightsaber, it shorts out the lightsaber. It's not about good or evil. Yes, it is. Let's talk about Osha, one first-class psychopath. Every chance Osha got, she was trying to get into Jackie's panties. Osha sees Jackie's body lying at the feet of her murderer. Osha's actions, convincing Yord to disobey Master Soul and return to the fight, directly leads to Yord's death. Does Osha show any signs of remorse, regret, contrition, sadness even? Nah, she can't even be bothered to check the bodies to see if anybody's still alive. Master Soul is just as evil. He witnesses his Padawan murdered right in front of him. Is there a moving scene where he crosses her arms, places her broken weapon on her chest, gently closes her eyes, and talks about how much she meant to him? Nah, he also can't be bothered to check and see if she's still alive. Remember, Disney Star Wars, you can take a lightsaber through the gut and walk it off. Don't be surprised, y'all, if Jackie shows back up before the series is over. May starts the series by hunting down and killing two Jedi. In episode four, she announces, now that I know my sister's alive, that changes everything. She's going to turn herself into the Jedi, help them hunt down her master. In episode five, a big chunk of the plot are Jedi dying to protect her. At one point, May force communicates with Osha, begs her to come save her. Osha does. How does May respond to all of this? She beats up Osha, takes her clothes, infiltrates the Jedi so she can kill them. Dum da dum dum dum. This raises the question, why were the Jedi working so hard to save May? They were there because they're hunting down a Jedi murderer, a double Jedi murderer. They don't know that she wanted to turn herself in, help them hunt down her master. Why did Master So throw his weapon away when the apothecary dude held May hostage? A mass murderer, he just killed six or seven Jedi, is holding his accomplice and fellow murderer hostage? What Master Soul should have said? Do it. You're going to save the Jedi Order a bunch of trouble. We don't have to take her back, try her, and kill her ourselves. So do it so I can get on with killing you. In fact, I'm going to count to three and then kill you. So shit or get off the pot. All the stupid plot holes, silliness, contrivances... They're just the means to the end, to justify the real purpose of this episode, the agenda, apothecary guys speechifying. I want to be able to wield my power as I see fit without having to answer to anyone. I identify with the dark side, with the Sith. I bet you do, Leslie Headland, former personal assistant to Harvey Weinstein. I bet you wish you could wield your power as you see fit, without having to worry about any repercussions of what you might or might not have done. It's not about good and evil. It's about power and who has the right to wield it. Disney can't even be original in their arguments. This argument has a very particular history in the context of witchcraft. Again, Disney is as subtle as a sledgehammer between the eyes. In the late 60s through the 70s, a vocal group of academic feminists became obsessed with Northern European witchcraft. They argued ideas like good and evil, morality, were subjective and arbitrary. They linked witchcraft with feminine power and Christianity, specifically the Catholic Church, with masculine power. These feminists claimed that the witch trials of the late Middle Ages into the Renaissance had nothing to do with morality. It was all about power and who was going to be allowed to wield it. The feminine power of witchcraft was becoming a threat to the masculine power of Christianity. So the church 
wielded their power to ruthlessly crush witchcraft. They just used concepts of good and evil, morality, to justify the wielding of that power. Despite this theory being completely debunked, Disney is still trying to claim the Sith represent the feminine power of witchcraft. On the flip side, the Jedi represent the masculine power of Christianity. That's why we are presented with a bizarre parody of Judeo-Christian ethics. The Jedi don't attack from behind. The Jedi don't attack unarmed people. The Jedi don't kill. This is a straw man argument. In canon, the Jedi do all those things. This has no relationship with Judeo-Christian ethics whatsoever. And as ideas, they're just stupid. They don't even make sense within the context of the show. Apothecary Dude is trying to kill May. Master Soul stops him. Apothecary Dude says, Naughty boy, you can't attack me from behind. What? Hey, normally I would do my best to stop that bad guy from killing you. But as it turns out this time, I'm behind the bad guy. That would be known as attacking from behind. Morally and ethically, I just can't do that. So what I need to do is I need to move around to the front so the bad guy can see me coming before I attack him. In the meantime, try to stay alive. Oh yeah, and let's hope I survive this as well. Dumb. As far as never attacking an unarmed person, Apothecary Dude is a Sith. He has the Force. He is a weapon. By the stated rules, he's still fair game. Dumb. What is the number one rule of a violent confrontation? Eliminate the threat. You continue to fight until there's no more threat. Sometimes the only way you can eliminate the threat is by killing the threat. Apothecary Dude is a Sith with the Force. He just killed seven or eight Jedi, including Master Soul's Padawan. Releasing Apothecary Dude will allow him to continue fighting, which he did. Master Soul violated the number one rule of a violent confrontation. He didn't eliminate the threat. Instead, he allowed it to go free, to continue murdering. From this point forward, everyone who is murdered by Apothecary Dude... Their deaths are now on the heads of Master So and Osha. There's a bigger problem for Disney and Leslie Headland. Jedi philosophy is not based upon Judeo-Christian principles. How do I know Jedi philosophy isn't based upon Judeo-Christian principles? George said so, multiple times, in multiple interviews. It's based upon Zen Buddhism, Shintoism, shamanistic practices, any number of religious traditions from around the world. But George has said that he specifically avoided using Judeo-Christian principles in developing Jedi philosophy. Even with all the twisting and distorting of Jedi philosophy, the best they're able to do is a crude parody of Judeo-Christian principles. As usual, Disney's trying to force a square peg into a round hole. Subtle as a sledgehammer between the eyes. I've said it before and I will say it again. Anytime you make the argument, it's not about good and evil, you're evil. So far in this series, we have preteen girls being indoctrinated into a cult with sexual overtones. We have a cult lying to the authorities. We have a cult convincing their children to lie to the authorities. And now we have Leslie Headland former personal assistant to Harvey Weinstein, making the argument that you should be allowed to wield your power as you see fit without worrying about repercussions. Disney is some evil sons of bitches. Anybody checked in Leslie Headland's basement lately? In academia, it's called value scrambling, taking the inherent contradictions in any philosophy and then twisting them and turning them, manipulating them, confusing people with the ultimate goal of getting people to reject that philosophy. There's a catch with value scrambling, though. You have to understand the values and the philosophies they're based upon before you can scramble them, convince people to reject those values and philosophies. Disney and Leslie Headland have no clue. They don't understand the values and philosophies they think they're attacking. Disney is so inept in their attempts to make the Sith witches sympathetic and to demonize the Jedi Order, 
it's backfiring. At this point, my only criticism of the Jedi is 16 years ago, they didn't finish the job. The Sith witches, including Ocean May, are evil incarnate. Something tells me Disney and Leslie Headland are going to sink to new lows before this series is over. At any rate, I hope I've given you all something to think about. And until next time, y'all be safe. If y'all are still here, I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. While you're at it, why don't you like this video, subscribe to the channel, click that notification bell. You can hear me yammer on about something else next time. And feel free to share this video far and wide. Please like and subscribe. Please leave a comment.